Hi, children. Gee, it's been a very long time since I've read any stories. It's such a nice autumn afternoon, and it's very quiet at my house. Can you hear the bird chirping? And I started to think, I need to write a story. It's been a long time. I need to start doing that again. So I went upstairs and looked in the bookcase and I found this book, which was one of my favorite books when I was a little girl. And it actually is the book that I had when I was a little girl. And it's called The Puppy Who Wanted a Boy. And it's by Jane Fair. Let's read together. The Puppy Who Wanted a Boy. One day, Petey, who was a puppy, said to his mother, who was a dog, I'd like a boy for Christmas. His mother, who was a dog, said she thought he could have a boy if he was a very good puppy. So the day before Christmas, Petey's mother asked, Have you been a very good puppy? Oh, yes said Petey. I didn't frighten the cat. You didn't? asked Petey's mother. Well, I just frightened her a little, said Petey. And I didn't chew any shoes. Not any, said his mother. Just a teeny weeny chew said Petey, and I remembered, well, almost always remembered to bark when I wanted to go out. All right, said his mother. I think you've been good for such a little dog. I will go out and get you a boy for Christmas. But when Petey's mother came back, she looked very worried. How would you like a soft white rabbit with pink ears for Christmas? She asked Petey. No, thanks, said Petey. Don't you want a lovely canary? I'd like a boy, said Petey. How about some guppy fish? They're nice said Petey's mother. Ooh. I just want a boy, said Petey. Petey, said his mother at last, there are no boys to be had. No boys? cried Petey. No one I could find. They're terribly short of boys this year. Petey thought he couldn't stand it if he didn't have a boy. Finally, his mother said, There now, there must be a boy somewhere. Perhaps you could find some dog who would give his boy away. You know what these words say? They say, no more boys. No boys today. Sorry, no boys. No boys. All out of boys. Oops. I think I should take the cover. That will make it easier. Do you think I could? asked Petey. It wouldn't hurt to try, said his mother. So Petey hoped. 
carefully started off. It wasn't long before he saw a collie racing with a boy on a bicycle. Petey trembled with joy. If I had a boy on a bicycle, said Petey to himself, I could run like everything. I'll take a little run right now and I'll ask the collie politely if he'll give his boy away. So Petey leaped after the bicycle. He called out to the collie, excuse me, do you want to give your boy away? But the collie said, no, he definitely didn't in a dreadful tone of voice. Petey sat down. He watched the collie and his boy on a bicycle until they were out of sight. I didn't really want a boy on a bicycle anyway, said Petey. After a while, he saw a setter playing ball with a boy. Petey was. Delighted. If I had a boy to play ball with, said Petey, I'd catch the ball smack in my mouth. I'd like to catch the ball now. But he remembered how cross the collie had been. So he sat down on the sidewalk and called out politely. Excuse me, do you want to give your boy away? But the setter said no. He definitely didn't in a terrifying tone of voice. Oh, well, said Petey, trotting off. I don't think playing ball is so much fun. Soon Petey came to a bulldog sitting in a car with a boy. Petey was pleased for he was getting a little tired from so much walking. If I had a boy in a car, said Petey, I'd laugh at walking dogs. I'd like a ride right now. So he called out loudly, but very politely, Excuse me, do you want to give your boy away? But the bulldog said no, he definitely didn't, and he growled in Petey's face. Oh dear, said Petey. He hurried behind a house and stayed there until he saw the bulldog and his boy drive away. Well, who wants to go riding in a car? Pfft, not me, said Petey, coming out from behind the house. He thought he would just rest a while, though. He had come a long way for such a little dog. He was limping a bit when he started off again. After a while, he met a Scotty. I think he's sad. Walking with his boy and carrying a package in his mouth. Now that is a good kind of boy, said Petey. If I had a boy to take walks with and carry packages for, there might be some dog biscuit or cookies in the package. I would like a cookie this minute. He hadn't had a bite of lunch. He remembered 
how cross the collie and the setter and the bulldog had been. So he stayed across the street and shouted at the top of his lungs, but polite as could be, excuse me, do you want to give your boy away? The Scotty had his mouth full of package, but he managed to say, no, he definitely didn't. And he showed his sharp teeth to Petey. I guess that wasn't the kind of boy I wanted either, said poor Petey. But my goodness, where can I find a boy? Well, Petey trotted on and on, but he couldn't find a single dog who would give his boy away. Petey's ears began to droop. His tail grew limp. His little legs were very tired. My mother was right. He thought, there isn't a boy to be had. Just as it was getting dark, he came to a large building on the very edge of town. Petey was going slowly by when he saw a sign, Orphan's Home. And in case you didn't know, an orphan is a kid who doesn't have a mom or dad. I know what orphans are, said Petey to himself. They are children who have no mother and no dog to take care of them either. Maybe I could find a boy here. He padded slowly up the walk of the orphan's home. He was so tired, he could hardly lift his little paws. Then Petey stopped. He listened. He could hear music. He looked through the window. He saw a lighted Christmas tree and children singing Christmas carols. Then Petey saw something else. On the front steps of the orphan's home, all by himself, sat a boy. He was not a very big boy and he looked lonely. Petey gave a glad little cry. He forgot about being tired. He leaped up and landed in the boy's lap. Sniff, sniff, went Petey's little nose. Wiggle, wig, wiggle, wag, went Petey's tail. He kissed the little boy with his warm, t wet tongue. How glad the boy was to see Petey. He put both his arms around the little dog and hugged him tight. Then the front door opened and a lady looked out. Well, here you are, Dicky, she said. What is our newest boy doing out here all alone? Come on in to the Christmas tree. Petey sat very still. The boy sat still. The boy looked up at the lady and down at Petey. Petey began to tremble. Would the boy go in and leave him? I'm not alone, said the boy. I got a puppy. A puppy? The lady came and looked at Petey in surprise. Can he come too? Asked the boy. Why, said the lady, you're a nice little dog. Wherever did you come from? Yes, bring him in. Come on, puppy, cried.
cried the boy. In they scampered. A crowd of boys were playing around the Christmas tree. They rushed at Petey. They picked him up and petted him. Petey wagged his tail. He wagged his fat little body. He frisked around and kissed every one of the boys. Can we keep him? said one. Can we give him some supper? asked another. Can we fix him a nice warm bed? said a third. We will give him some supper and a nice warm bed, said the lady, and tomorrow we will find his mother and see if she'll let him stay. Petey knew his mother would let him stay. She knew how much he wanted a boy. But won't she be surprised, said Petey to himself with a happy little grin. When I tell her I got 50 boys for Christmas. about some lonely little boys and a lonely little dog and they found each other. I like it. You see the sunset over my shoulder? It's getting late so Grandma Alice is going to go for now. I hope you have a wonderful week. I won't